So the one thing when we talk about uh, multi-phase flow, we now need to initialize our reservoir. We have a lot more initialization steps. You know, before we just I, we just gave you the pressure is p zero or p initial in the reservoir, and it's the pressure everywhere. But you know, now we need to initialize the pressure of the water, the pressure of the oil, and the saturation of one or the other. If we're just talking about water and oil, which we're going to only limit ourselves to for the immediate future discussion, if you know the saturation of one, then you know the saturation of both of them, right? Because the two saturations add to, add to one, of course. Okay? So uh, here are the steps for initializing the reservoir simulator. And like when you go into CMG, th this is, you know, if you turn capillary pressure off, which is what we've done, oh, and that, that reminds me. Um, Thursday, check your emails uh, over the next couple of days, but Thursday we're going to have another day where we'll, if you want, we'll meet in the LRC, um, but otherwise you, you can also work on it at home. You'll have a video to watch, just like we did last time. So there'll be a video to watch, um, and you can come in and get help from the TAs, or you can just do it at home if you want. It's very critical, I mean, th that you do it, though, because this is actually the first part of your final project, and it's really important. There's some curve fitting and other things, and it's really important that you get that part right, because if you don't get that part right, it's going to mess things up later, okay? So make sure you do it, and do it correctly. Um, you'll have a, the video to watch to sort of carry you along, right? Anyway, uh, back to this. So, yeah, so in CMG, you know, you either tell it <laughs> No capillary pressure, which is what we've done so far, or uh, or you can initialize the simulation via some uh, capillary pressure. And so the steps that it's using are very much in line with what we're going to talk about here. And um, you know, here's sort of the steps just listed, uh, but we'll also kind of go through them graphically. So the first thing we do is identify the water pressure at at a, a reference point. The reference point being the the water oil contact line, right where Essentially, this, the saturation of the water is one. Okay, so if, if this is you know in a vertical reservoir, neglecting capillary pressure in some transition region, you know all of the oil would be on top and all of you know, all of the water would be on the bottom. Um, so at at the water oil contact line, we we set the capillary pressure to the capillary entry pressure, the displacement pressure. So that We'll see it on the capillary pressure curve, pl pr capillary pressure saturation curve in a minute. Um, but you guys, I think, know what the capillary entry pressure is from petrophysics or something. And given that, so if you know, or, or at least in this case, we're saying at that reference point, at the water oil contact, the capillary entry, we know the capillary pressure. It's the capillary entry pressure. And then we know, the, we also know the water pressure. Uh, then, with, given that the capillary pressure is the difference in the oil and the water pressure, we can compute the pressure of the oil. Okay, and so now at that at that reference position, at the reference position, the, the water oil contact line. Oops. Hmm. Oh, apologies. Let me. Uh, I forgot to sort of. Uh, For some reason, every single time I plug this in, I have to do a little calibration step. Okay, so uh, at the reference, the, the water oil contact line, we now have the pressure of the oil and the water, and then we, we compute the pressure of the oil and the water at the grid block center. So if you, I know that's hard to see, but this is this is the ith. So at the ith grid block, using the z location at the ith grid block, we can then just use the hydrostatic calculation. So like rho g z, right? So we just use the hydrostatic calculation along with the reference pressures to compute the pressure everywhere. So then we have the pressure everywhere for the oil and the water based on that co computation. And with that, we can compute the difference everywhere. When I say everywhere, I mean at all the grid block centers where we need the information, right? 
so then we can, then we have the capillary, if we know the pr pressure of the oil and the pressure of the water at all the grid block centers, we can compute the capillary pressure at all the grid block centers. And then from that, we can use uh, the pressure saturation curves uh, to, uh, to compute the, the capillary pressure. Right. So, yeah, so visually this is just a, a visual image of a vertical reservoir uh, where you'd have a water zone, a water or oil, gas oil, and, and all the sort of assumptions that go along with that, and a gas cap. Well, now we're not, not considering uh, gas or a gas uh, oil transition zone right now. But anyway, the, the point of what we're trying to do is to determine the pressure of the wa oil, water, the pressure of the oil, and the saturation of the water as a function of depth so that we can initialize our reservoir scenario. Okay. Um, I guess, by the way, we're all of this, w w you know, the final project is multi-phase flow, but it's in CMG. We're, you're not going to have to write, um, you're not going to have to write a multi-phase code. If you take a graduate course in uh, reservoir simulation, then we'd probably ask you to do that. But so what we're doing now is just so you have some idea of what's going on inside CMG. Um, okay, so this is, uh, our goal is to initialize it. Uh, we are using the assumption that the oil migrated into the rock, displacing the water. So we're going to look at the dr drainage portion of the capillary pressure curve. Uh, the capillary pressure at the water oil contact line is the displacement pressure the, or the entry pressure. Um, the starting point, water oil contact line, this is the point where the saturation of the water is one. Uh, there's no oil below that. Um, and the capillary pressure is then calculated from the density difference. And you'll see that in the next slide. Uh, so the blue line here is just the pressure of the water <coughs> associated with the hydrostatic pressure. So just rho GZ. And the pressure of the oil also just rho GZ. And because G and Z are the same, then the capillary pressure, the difference between the pressure of the oil and the pressure of water is simply a function of the difference in the densities of the oil and the water. Right? And so then uh, with those we can compute the capillary pressure at all depths um, at where you know these I locations would be the locations of each grid block center. Right? So this is the Z location of each grid block center. That's what I means. And so then the steps are just listed there. They're exactly identical to what they were on the first slide. So then once we know the capillary pressures from the density differences, then we can go over. So we have a capillary pressure at each grid block center. Um, and then we can just go over to the drainage portion of the capillary pressure curve and read off the saturations. And this is how you get the saturation. So this is, you know, sort of automatically done for you in CMG, but but this is the sort of steps behind it. And so the nice thing is, if you were actually doing this by hand, and at some point you might even have to do this in CMG, but CMG also comes with a full suite of capillary pressure curves, and you can sort of read these. You can use these tables right out of the, you know, right out of the code, as opposed to they may not have it for every reservoir you're ever going to be interested in, right? But for for a large class of regular, you know, Brera sandstone and other stuff, they're going to have all this information in there, and then they're just going to do these computations for you automatically. But uh, if you ever needed to, you can also sort of upload your own capillary pressure curves and and other things. So in the end, then you'd get a saturation profile that looked like this, and then you'd have everything you need to start your simulation, right? Because you need to know, if we're talking about two phase, you need to know either the saturation of the oil or the water, uh, and then the, the two pressures. And that's just a recap of the earlier slide.
so then, now we know how to initialize it. So the last